the perspective, the dynamic, the energy, and all of chaotic presentation being composed in a very harmony way. This is Posca Demizu, the creator of Promise Neverland. How does she do it? What went through her brain and how was the process looks like to create all of these strangely alluring effects? That is exactly what I'm trying to figure out. Follow my compressed 12 hour journey of me trying to break this art style down in half a day in order for me to create my own entire original art piece using them as a style. Or oh, the real question is, can we do it in half a day? To begin our course, I came up with a plan. Tackling an art style is not a thing you'd be doing in a week time, let alone in half a day. So I need to approach this attempt with a plan. I laid out my first stage of process. Stage one, studying the composition style and the common perspective that Nemesis used in her illustrations. Stage two, understanding the lining style that she proudly presents across her works. Stage three, Understanding the rendering choice that Demizu chose to represent her world onto an artwork. And last but not least, the final stage, attempting to create an artwork from scratch using all of the information that we have gathered. Sounds easy? <laughs> Spoiler alert, it is not. Let's begin. Starting with the sketches, I forgot to mention, the reason I got into Posuka Demizu's work in the first place, when I was traveling to Japan, my friend showed me an illustrations book by Posuka Demizu, then I myself found one catered towards Promise Neverland promotional work. In this book, I got to see how she laid down her sketches. In the first attempt, I did try to stay true to the process as close as possible, but the difference between me and Posuka Demizu is she have an extensive amount of experience of drawing manga. And I'm not. And she is very capable of working with little information for her lines. I'm an illustrator. I took a way more careful approach on my sketches so my line art process can be as smooth as possible. With that said, this amount of information will be the end of me if I proceed to the line process at this stage. So I changed my gears a little bit. I re-sketch my first attempt with color-coded lines to indicate which one is the foreground and which one is the background. So I did the same on the second one shortly after I conclude this stage with my finding. The conclusion is she went ham with composition. She makes sure that whatever you were supposed to see are being presented by the whole piece. Even without colors, you can feel the piece screaming at you, showing you where to look. With this, I was confident that the next stage will be seamless, thinking that I don't even use up all of the two and a half hours I gave myself for this exercise. After a short break, I jumped right into the next stage and it was not as I expected. This stage, the lining stage, was supposed to be the fun stage. Line art is my forte. I've been told many times that my lines speak for my art. Feeling egoistic, I run through the piece with my knowledge on lining and after just 30 minutes of progress, realizations hit me. Posca Demizus is an artist with freedom. At least that's what I've seen from her collection of works. There's a rhyme and reason to everything but there's no strict rule that she follows. Or rather, the rules follows her. Even her line art, if you look closely, are very chaotic. It moves in such energy that does not obey the general rule of lining. Straight line wasn't straight, but it looks straight in her art. Shapes indicate certain things, but if you take out the details such as skulls, it don't look like what it was supposed to be. I was struggling. No amount of attention I can give that able to recreate this energy that she has over her linings. How irony. I took more time completing a sketchy look than a clean one. I was immediately humbled by this stage and you guess it, when the time ran out, I wasn't able to finish it. I missed certain detailing such as brick lines and other background details and I didn't even see in the beginning. With a heavy heart, I conclude my attempt. I was not happy. And this carried out onto the last stage when I did my own art attempt. Stay tuned for that. The line looks very, very much similar to the sketch phase. And yes, it is by design. I bet if we're able to separate the layers of Posca's work, 
it will look the same but naturally Posica's line look way more within reasons than mine the line looks like it was designed to be quick but I took way more time replicating it rather than just write the flow unfortunately I have to call this stage a failure it really don't look that bad but knowing that the purpose of such lines being used in the first place isn't achieved I cannot call this a dub After another break, I came in full swing to the next stage, motivated to conquer it nice and seamless this time around. Little did I know, whatever happened on the last stage is only the beginning of a downfall. As the usual trend, it started pretty smooth in the beginning, tackling the first R isn't that much of a headache. It was visually easier than the other one. While I was rendering this piece, I immediately be able to tell that the rendering is what solidifies the whole piece. This is where you will be able to separate the background and the subject of attention. The value difference gave this piece a clear understanding which was the center of attention are. But it is not so easy to achieve on the second one, the final boss of this study. The insanity of Postgademy's visual prowess really does show in this one. With crazy perspective, lens type and direct challenge to the logical meaning of gravity, everything here gave me nightmares. And it carries on onto the rendering. The value on this is not so straight to the point as you'll be able to see the value between the main subject and the major part of illustrations are very constant. What gave meanings to the subject is the silhouette. She smartly used the lighting in the background to bring the value of the main subject more meaningful attention. The piece changed my whole perspective on how to create an environmental piece. It is always about how to capture your subject and present it as a main attention while the environment supports that ideology. All in all, two and a half hours for this isn't nearly enough. Going into this stage, my motivation has been completely shattered, trampled and thrown out of the window. It was a lot harder than I thought, but I'm not about to give up. This is a fight that we have been going through for the past nine hours and we have to keep going. So here is my attempt. I started off pretty easy. I chose less environment details but still try to push that Posica's visual concept. The sketch goes on pretty easily. The idea on this stage is just to give the piece a sense of direction. After that, starts on the real battle, the lining stage. It is as hard as when I did the study. I struggle really really hard to keep it simple. To a point, I omit some details that initially I wanted to go for just to give myself a bit more leisure approach. The line work does not really look that bad but it doesn't really look the way that it was supposed to. At this point, I lost all of my confidence but knowing that I had the same issues before, I know the rendering could save this. I started off with two different values for the coloring and chose to only use these two values in majority part of my drawings. I remember one of the best way that Posicus did to direct attention is to play it smart with the silhouette. And I did just that. The black and red works flawlessly. It gives the main subject the energy that it needed and the subtle blue hair give it more contrast to represent the character. I was right, the colors save it all. And I will not say that this is the best attempt in implementing Posca Demis' art style, but I was pleasantly surprised on how much of that Posca energy I managed to bring into this illustration. And I won't be saying this without any early fail attempt that I had before this whole breakdown. These are several pieces that I did implementing Posca's style, or rather try to implement Posca's style just by drawing what I see. A lot of these are not really that bad, but each one of it have something that just wasn't there. 
This one doesn't have the color hierarchy to it. It looks really dull all around. This one doesn't have killer perspective. It looks pretty normal. The color is pretty all right, um, but there's just no angle to play around with. And this one just doesn't have enough silhouette to pop the main attention. At the end of the day, a careful studies are the one that give you the most value to you as an artist. And I hope this video give you guys the value that you guys needed to start your own journey on becoming a great artist. Thank you so much for watching this humble attempt in not only breaking down the art studies but also the creation of this video. If you have any other artists that you want to see me try to crack open, comment down below. And if you're wondering whether I really did these studies in 12 hours or not, every minute of it was done on live stream on twitch.tv slash check out the link below. That's all from me. Stay frosty.